And it's good to be here. It's a beautiful day here. A bright sunny summer day. And all the things that are going on here are indicative of the time of year. The time of growth, the time of coming forth. We're of course aware of all the different cycles in our own lives, individually speaking. And also to some extent aware of the different things that are going on in the lives around us, our families and friends, the people in the world, the situations in the world. All of them coming to a point of the brightness of summer, the brightness of the full light of day. The planet has been wobbling for so many thousands of years that we go through this winter and summer mode with the fluctuation from northern and southern hemisphere. We don't know balance yet on Earth. This is reflected in people's consciousness and reflected in the situation of how the world moves. We're ultimately responsible for the planet and bringing the planet back into a place of balance. The only place of balance is to be balanced in the true sense of identity, which is in the oneness of the light. We are all people of the light, co-creators of the consciousness here on Earth, co-creators of the very planet itself, charged with the responsibility of stewarding all that is here, looking after all the things that go on. In some ways, the things that have been going on are hardly reflective of the truth of who we are as individuals and as a collective. Nevertheless, the truth still has a, and always has been this case, still has the possibility of being revealed while we're still alive. This has been passed on generation after generation. Each generation content to let it, the opportunity pass by. Ultimately, mankind and the opportunity for mankind is to reveal while mankind is alive and that God is in action on earth, that the creators are here and set things right. It's kind of like a garden. If it's cared for, it reveals something different, something of care. If it's controlled in the way that mankind's consciousness controls everything, perhaps with all the chemicals and things that mankind shows, then it can be toxic to the wildlife, it can be toxic to the bees and the creatures and everything else. And the world has become toxic, not by reason of the fact that that's its natural state, but it's toxic because of the consciousness that's in the world, toxic consciousness. We allow things to go on and ignore them. In, the, in Canada, we're so concerned about the environment that most of the pollution that goes on in the world exists and comes from the source of contamination of the largest source of contamination on the planet, the Alberta tar sands. And yet, it's hardly even in the awareness of consciousness. But this is only part of it, a state of imbalance in all the different ways, including war, including poverty, including hunger, including disease, including all the things that are indicative of the lower level of vibratory living. We've gotten used to it over thousands of years, living at the, a very seemingly safe, but very uh, low level with war and with all other conditions that go on, giving the responsibility of living to governments and means of control, religions and things. But we need to 
as individuals take back our power, reveal the truth of who we are. This goes for all mankind. We can no longer give that responsibility to a priesthood or a political system or some sort of system out there. Because all of it turns out to be an abuse of the power that we give them. So we individually come back, come home, come to the place of knowing the truth about who we are as individuals. So the question might be asked, who are you? And the usual identity is through something, a name, what we do, who we are in society perhaps. But I don't know if that is the truth. And the truth ultimately is the sense of awareness, the body of awareness in your consciousness. When the body of awareness of consciousness is with, in line with the, the truth of consciousness, then there's more power that's available to move through us. The truth of consciousness is we're one with the Creator, one with God, each one. That sense of oneness needs to be reclaimed. You, I, all people on earth, have the ability to find that oneness, to find that truth. But people search for the truth in all sorts of convoluted ways making it almost too hard. The body and mind and heart are incapable of creating the truth. But they can discern the truth when they are aligned with the true sense of identity. The true sense of identity is the individualized divine being within. And we say within, it also extends beyond the form. But the true sense of identity only loves one thing, it loves the light, it loves the supreme creator in that sense. And our consciousness is minds and hearts go. The sense of ego, the sense of identity needs to come to the same union of awareness of what the first love is. The Ego cannot find the truth by searching for itself, by searching for its true identity. It has to love the same thing that the true identity loves. We point it in the same direction that the true identity is pointed. The true identity loves the Creator, first and foremost. It's the first love. And in that, there is union. There's a possibility of the human side of the equation rising up. But it has to rise up. It has to come to that place of wanting the same thing that the truth of identity wants. The truth of identity only seeks to have union with the oneness of all things, with the light, with the Creator. We use the word God, but people identify God somewhere else. They don't see it in themselves, and as a result, they don't see it in others. They don't see it in the environment, so the environment suffers also. And the world is in chaos, war and conflict. And all a representation of the fact that man is fighting against God. Because to fight against anybody is to fight against God. To fight against nature is to fight against God. To have patterns of conflict are patterns of conflict against God, against the light. Because all things are the light. Without the light is nothing made that is made. So we can't fight against anything in the usual sense of 
war and conflict, men's inhumanity to men. And we need to come back to what is truly important, the only thing that's really important. And in that finding, the only thing that's really important, we find all the life that we're given to live, all the opportunities for joy, all the opportunities for happiness, all the opportunities for all the things we really want in our heart, because the light gives that. The Creator gives you in everything that you could possibly want. But you have to ask in the right way. You have to allow the sense of consciousness to be in the oneness, in agreement with your divinity, with your divineness. Without that agreement inside, there's a state of separation. The state of separation is a more a sense of feeling from the mind and the heart that somehow God is somewhere else, that the Creator is somewhere else, maybe in the past, maybe in the future, and so people wait. And all the time, ignoring the reality that the Creator is plain and simple all around. And people sometimes feel alone. They have issues where they long for union with someone, perhaps to feel the sense of aloneness resolved. But before we can even deal with the sense of aloneness by filling the void with somebody else, we have to go into the aloneness and find the oneness that's already there. And the realization in loneliness, in individuality, in the sense of individuality, is that really, well, it's a gift. It's an opportunity to find what is truly in the heart all along. And we can, in that sense, never be alone. We're never separate from God, from the Creator. There's no such thing. It's factually impossible for that to occur. But the sense of aloneness, the, the feeling of separation that the mind and the heart goes through is a gift, is an opportunity to come back home into the truth of the heart of the Creator, to find yourself in there, to find your identity in there. And this is possible for each person. And we cannot do it for anybody else. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me or anybody else. It's the plain, simple truth. If we can, to help the world, come back to the sense and awareness of the oneness. All life is one. All creation is one. If you look out at anybody, if you see somebody else out there, and you think that there's a state of separation, it's the illusion, because there is no separation in that sense. Our bodies are participating in the awareness of the life force, translated by the mind, translated by the heart. So we think we have bodies. And yet when we sit in a chair, there's a beginning of the loss of awareness of where our forms are and where the chair is. As we lose the sense of the perception of our physical forms, we still have physical form, but the loss of the sense of the state of separation between our physical form and that which is around starts to be revealed. We can feel ourselves being one with the chair. We can feel ourselves, our physical forms, being one with the air, with the atmosphere. Even though there's a slight sensation